Right, so, um, so answers explaining, essentially every blade is different and uh, this one is actually really bright. The reason for that is the wooden leather scabbard it was kept in has kept it really nice. I mean, it's got some dark uh, marks uh, that you can see, dark staining from corrosion. Uh, we're not gonna be able to remove those really um, unless we ground the surface completely off, which I have no intention of doing. So those dark stains, to some extent, are gonna stay there. There's a tiny bit of corrosion at the base of the blade. Again, that shows us that that's the reason the blade is bright because the scabbard was protecting this, but obviously at the junction where the scabbard meets the guard, air and uh, moisture in the air can get to the blade and that's exactly what it's done. So typically with antique swords and knives, if, you, if you're gonna get any corrosion at all, it will be up here because that's the top of the scabbard. Um, now with this blade, I don't think that there's anything more I can do to it with wire wool. I've cleaned off, basically if a surface feels smooth to your hands, wire wool's not really gonna do much at this point because wire wool removes things that are standing proud of the surface. And this surface feels absolutely smooth to me now. Now, as mentioned, it's got grind marks in it um, from a stone, from a sharpening stone. So this knife, probably used in hunting, has probably seen lots of big game hunting in India or something like that. So it may have been used on, <laughs> who knows, pigs, tigers, Ele elephants, who, who knows, um, but it's probably been used as a hunting knife in the late 19th century, early 20th century. Um, and it's been sharpened a lot. It's actually got a very fine edge on it, although it's lost its bite, as it were. I will put that back. Um, so I will give it its teeth back, so to speak. But first of all, I want to treat this surface. Now, you'll notice I this is my crotch. <laughs> uh, this is my crotch and this is my weapon. This is my drill specifically. And you'll know, many of you who've watched previous videos, you'll know my beloved felt wheel. Now, this is an old knackered we would say in Britain one uh, but it works well still and it's not completely worn down so I'm still still on this it's on its last legs I do have a new one in fact I've got a couple of new ones to go in here uh, but I'm still using the old one uh, for quite a lot of things partly because all felt wheels are different uh, stiffnesses so to speak this gets dodgier and dodgier um, but I prefer a softer felt wheel and some of the felt wheels are a bit too tough for me. Right, so I'm gonna stop talking and I'm gonna start polishing. Uh, cardinal rules to polishing are that polishing paste is really what's doing it. Yeah, there's friction with the felt, but the polishing paste is what really accelerates the process. There's different types of this. I pretty much have always used the green one and found it works for me. I know other you can get other color ones. A lot of people use the white one. Uh, to be completely honest, I've never used any other ones other than green, and green works fine for me. So, I use the green one. You, When the uh, drill's on, you touch it against the side, and it sort of picks up the, the paste. Um, and then when you're polishing, uh, be wary of which direction the wheel's spinning in, and don't have it so that it's going to suddenly shoot something off into your leg or anything like that. Obviously, if you've got a tip and the wheel's spinning, don't bring the tip up so the tip digs in and it will shoot the thing out of your hand. Uh, be wary. I would recommend wearing goggles or glasses. I am wearing glasses at the moment anyway. Um, I don't wear gloves. Now, this is a personal thing. Um, obviously, from a health and safety point of view, I should recommend you wear gloves. However, um, I actually find that sometimes I have a better hold on something without gloves, but specifically to knives and swords, you don't want the blade, particularly the point and the edge, to get too hot. And the problem with wearing gloves is you can't feel how hot the blade is getting. Uh, and you can actually slightly kind of discolor the surface from heat, essentially heat treating it. I'm not gonna say it will get hot enough to ruin the heat treatment, because I'm not sure that it can get that hot from this wheel, but, you can make unsightly heat blemishes on the blade, which obviously you don't want. Um, so, uh, and you don't, generally speaking, want a blade to be getting hot when you're working on it. So I tend to use bare hands most of the time. I do sometimes wear gloves, that has to be said. Uh, so I'm gonna get polishing. Um, you can get these felt wheels off Amazon or eBay or anywhere. Mount it in a in a drill, in a bench. Yes, you can mount these different versions of these into an actual proper professional polishing wheel. I actually have one, but I still prefer this because it's small um, and I just like the shape of it and it seems to work well for swords and knives. So I'm gonna get polishing and um, I'll show you a little bit of that, but it's gonna be noisy so I'm not gonna be able to talk over it.
So something to reiterate is that as much as possible you want the spin of the wheel and bear in mind with the drill another advantage of the drill is you can leave it where it is and you can often change the direction that it spins in um, obviously at the back of the drill um, you want it to be spinning away from the edge or away from the point depending what you're polishing at the time so you don't want the the wheel to suddenly dig into the edge or dig into the point it's really really important So a little note there, you'll notice that I switched from being, uh, well, let's say zero degrees onto the, to the drill to 90 degrees onto the drill, depending how you, what you judge as 90 and zero, um, but essentially changing it through 90 degrees. And that is for the, exactly the same reason as I said to spin in, uh, rub in circles with the wire whirl, because by changing the direction, you kind of overlay the micro scratches that you're putting into the play, because ultimately with polishing, that's kind of what you're doing. You're, you're kind of abrading, but you're putting smaller abrasions in with this than actually already exists in the blade so it's kind of like you're removing big abrasions with small abrasions um, but you want to overlay those if you want a more mirror surface and in fact the more you can change direction the better well, that has to be said with the way that the wheel spins and the shape of the knife itself often it's only possible to do it in a couple of directions but changing as much as you can So I'm pretty damn happy actually with how this is coming out. Some of those dark marks I said wouldn't come out actually kind of more or less have, or they're a lot more faint than they were. Ultimately, yeah, if you just keep buffing forever and eventually you'd end up with a piece of mirror steel with no sign of aging at all. And I don't want that. What I really want to do is just get rid of the, get rid of the dirt and the needless scratches off the surface. And kind of, it, it's a bit like, um, well, it's a bit like anything that's kind of like artistic, essentially. So you've got to use your judgment um, of how far to go and where to stop. And I kind of think that I'm pretty much there now. I mean, this is an antique item. I don't want it to look like new. Yes, I could grind the surface off and completely put a new one on, but that would be ruining it as an antique. And I think at this stage, that's about right. You can see now the dark um, marks from from corrosion but they're smooth you can see all the um, sort of scratching from all the repeated re-honing that the blade has had but it the surface has been polished and cleaned one thing I want to address now which I can't quite get into with the buffing wheel in any way the buffing wheel is not abrasive enough to do it is this little bits of corrosion at the base of the blade and what I'm going to do is just kind of put that more securely there we go um, what I'm gonna do is whack a glove back on and um, get in there with my little bit of wire wool again and simply gonna um, oops let's pick that up again <laughs> simply gonna get a little bit like a little wad and um, push it I hope you can see there kind of push it into that right angle it actually helps if you secure the knife down and then just get properly rubbing into that. The wire will being squishy and a bit like a metal sponge will just absorb, um, not absorb, uh, adopt the shape that it's being pushed into and it'll get into all of the recesses in there. Uh, I have to move in a straight line here. I can't really move in circles, unfortunately, because of the nature of the um, kind of recess that I'm getting into. Oh, that's doing a 
far better job than I even expected actually. Um, this has still got oil on it um, from earlier which is great because that assists the cleaning process and also at the same time as clean, cleaning the base of this blade, so I'll just move it over there so you can see a bit better, at the same time as cleaning the base of the blade it's also cleaning the top of the guard at the same time so it's doing two in one which is brilliant because I don't like hard work and anything that makes my job easier is a good thing. I think that's how, man, how mankind got here, is by trying to make jobs easier. Let's build a tool that does this more easily. Ah, we're now better than the civilization across the hill. Now we can conquer them and make them do our work for us. Right, um, that's enough of politics for today. Uh, so as I'm going around here anyway, I'm going to carry on cleaning the guard with the wire whirl. The guard does have some corrosion on it, particularly at the back on this side that I'm about to do now. Um, obviously the guard was not inside a scabbard so it was more exposed to the elements than uh, than the blade was i'm never gonna make the guard bright and shiny but i do want to remove the active corrosion off the top of it which i think i've more or less done there right pretty happy with that um let's do the underneath of the guard where we're at it point in a secure place it's into wood here so we're not doing the blade any harm and exactly the same thing on the underside of the guard the you want to be careful so here i've got no problems because i've got a steel ferrule just there but if the organic material in this case antler came all the way down to the guard you want to be careful not to be scratching the guard with wire wool because of course as you probably suspect, steel is harder than antler. Although antler is actually fairly hard, I have to say. Prehistoric people used antler for digging tools. There have been antler picks found in old prehistoric mine sites. And so antler is pretty tough stuff, but obviously not as hard as iron and steel. Or we wouldn't be, wouldn't have gone through the Iron Age, we would have gone to the antler age. Maybe we did, I don't know. Um, so, cleaning the underneath of... Uh, the guard again i'm not that obsessive about i don't want this to be like ridiculously clean and shiny i just want it to be better than it is at the moment as always with um dirty where's my oily rag gone um as with dirty um oily things sometimes you can't tell how much effect you're having until you actually clean the grime off um oh wow good again better than i expected nice i'm really glad with how this is turning out actually it's so i funnily that i picked i picked this because i thought it was in a bit of a bad state but as it turns out it's in a much better condition than i realized but it was under a lot of dirt rather than actual corrosion so yeah i mean that's pretty much where i want it to be um i don't need to do an awful lot more on that i am gonna lightly buff these help parts i've decided on the buffing wheel not you know not as much as the blade but just to um if anything to remove slightly the abrasion marks of the wire wall because the remember that hilt parts are made of softer steel or in some cases iron than a blade so wire wool will barely scratch a blade because wire wool's mild steel that's carbon steel whereas this is also mild steel so um hilt fittings will both clean more quickly but also scratch more easily than than a blade well where's my piece of oh, the problem is with wire wool is it as you use it it gets ever smaller <laughs> and eventually you just have to get another bit um let's just clean around this ferrule or bolster some people might call that um it's around here this is so partly this uh, funnily enough the ferrule on this is very clean but it does have that nasty varnish that we were talking about before on it so actually what i'm mostly doing here is cleaning that varnish off old-fashioned varnish as many of you will know has a tendency to go brown with age so sometimes what you see when you see brown gunk and what can even look like rust sometimes on antique weapons is sometimes just varnish and you clean it off i actually had this with a gun with the carbine that i've shown in some of my previous videos cavalry carbine and um 
the, that came to me covered in this old varnish. It'd obviously been hung on someone's wall over their fireplace probably, and so they'd whacked varnish on it to stop it from rusting. And it came to me looking like it was just really grubby and everything, and I really, I scratched this varnish off, and it was wonderfully preserved underneath. The varnish had done a great job. Um, Right, that again, that ferrule is where I want it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to buff these hilt parts and I'm also just, I'm not going to use wire wheel at all on this because the pommel cap nicely is actually quite, um, is actually pretty clean already. So I'm simply going to use the buffing wheel on that. So I'm just going to do a little bit of buffing. I'll let you see that. Um, but we're getting there. It's great progress. I'm really happy with how this knife's turning out. What a gorgeous, um, what a gorgeous thing and uh, worth certainly more than I paid for it. Right, so let's, I'm just gonna do a bit of buffing on those hilt parts now. Okay, so I'm pretty much where I wanna be with the metal parts of this knife. Um, and as you know, the scabbard's done, so I've polished up the pommel and cleaned up the guard somewhat and the ferrule and the blade and I'm pretty happy with that. The only two things remaining to be done with this are um, sharpening the blade which I'll deal with, deal with in a separate video because sharpening is a whole thing by itself um, and, uh, and cleaning the um, antler. Now in terms of cleaning the antler I'm sure different people recommend different things. I tend to take a softly, softly approach. Um, I'm not gonna buff, I'm not gonna use wire wool, anything like that. I'm just gonna use a toothbrush. This is actually a little nylon brush, um, but an old toothbrush would do. Um, you could use toothpaste. Toothpaste is of course a mild abrasive um, and will probably clean that up. I might give that a go, see how toothpaste goes. Um, and um, other people might advise simply using soapy water. Soapy water, of course, will remove grease or oil, which are the most likely dirty things which are stuck and adhering to this antler surface. So I'm going to go and uh, clean that up. And uh, then once I've done that, um, we can have a look at the uh, finished knife and scabbard in a second. So here's the finished thing, or at least finished as far as I'm concerned. Uh, the only thing left to do actually is sharpen, which again, I'll de deal with sharpening in a different video. I actually dealt with the antler handle in the end with soapy water and nothing else, decided not to do anything abrasive to it. Um, here's the scabbard, you can hopefully now see the decoration on that leather and the steel fittings have come up very nicely and just turn that over. You can see the spring there with the little bit that uh, catches the edge of the guard and you can see it's even got some little uh, lines of decoration on the back as well and there's the stitching on the leather all intact um, and that's just there's the wooden core. So very happy with that, it's in very good condition for the age and here is the blade as you can see it's come out rather nicely nice and clean relatively speaking for its age anyway and I've got to say it's still got a pretty good edge on it you can probably see just how fine it is there it won't take very much to sharpen at all and the guard the pommel cap and the antler is all in nice condition let's um, flip it over there you go and you can see there's a little bit of corrosion on the on the guard but I'm not worried about that. It's, you know, it's 100, 130 years old, something like that. So um, I'm very happy with that for what it is. And it's a very nice piece and will sit very nicely in my collection. I hope this has been interesting. And if you ever see one of these or have one that you want to sell, let me know. But if you ever see one, you now know what it is. It is an Anglo-Indian Bowie knife. Cheers, folks. Thank you for watching, please subscribe and feel free to follow us on Facebook.